Our next session on December 4th will be with Adaptivation. Lori Dahlquist and Jonathan Eckrich will be talking about light tech. Back to the basics. But today we have Sarah Schneider. She is joining us to talk about AAC training and products from Lingraphica. And with that, I will turn it over to Sarah. I will stop sharing. Thank you so much. I will go ahead and share my slides again. All right. Thanks, Deborah. Looks like oh. it's coming through. So I am Sarah Schneider, and I am a speech language pathologist and senior clinical educator at Lingraphica. So I appreciate you all letting me join you today to talk a little bit about the offerings and AAC devices through Lingraphica. I have been a speech pathologist for 17 years, and prior to coming to Lingraphica, worked pretty much across all of the settings and across the lifespan, both pediatric and adult clients. So that's a little bit about my background, but I want to go ahead and dive in and give you some information about Lingraphica. So first, I just want to kind of lay a foundation for all of the different things that we offer here at Lingraphica. Of course, we have our dedicated speech de generating devices, which is what we're really going to be digging into deep today. And we'll talk about more in depth. But we also offer our free small talk apps. So those are apps that you can access on any iOS platform. There are 14 small talk apps. Some of those are video apps for practice of various communication exercises. And then some of those are going to be vocabulary of words and phrases for basic conversation, daily activities. Keep in mind that those apps are not customizable like our dedicated speech generating device. So if you've downloaded some of those small talk apps and perhaps shown them to a client, they're seeming motivated or interested, that would probably be a good indicator to go ahead and start a trial or look one step further at those dedicated speech generating devices that we offer so that you'll have those customizable options and features that we're gonna cover today. But the apps can be a good place to start. And then we also offer two free therapy platforms here at Lingraphica, Talk Path Therapy, is a library of over 13,000 exercises across language, speech, cognition, oral motor. You can, as the SLP, go in and set up a customized practice path for your client to work through and get reports back about their accuracy and number of tasks completed. And we'll take a look at talk path therapy when we're in the device later. We also offer TalkPath News, and that is a free supported reading app. We do write and modify articles about current news events and topics in-house at Lingraphica. And when the user accesses those, it's going to read that modified news article aloud. It highlights the text, and then it will provide comprehension or recall questions at the end of the article. So just a couple of free therapy resources to keep in mind that we offer here at Lingraphica as well. All right, so we're going to really be focusing on our devices today. And I wanna just give you some information about the three hardware options that we offer. So we did in February of this year, release new software called Hub. And that's what you're seeing pictured here on all of these different size devices. So we have one software option, Hub. You're seeing different tools, different pages within that software. But we do have three hardware or size of tablet options. Right there in the center is our 8-inch screen. That's our mini talk. And then to the right, is our 10 inch screen. That is our touch talk. That's our most popular option. The one that most of our users tend to go with. 
And then to the left is our largest option at 12.4 inches across the screen is our Touch Talk Plus. So again, keeping in mind that the software is going to remain the same across these options. So when you're thinking about hardware options, you're considering things like vision, um, maybe potentially access or motor concerns and also portability. So if your client is um, wanting something that's easy to throw in their bag or take on the go a lot, maybe that smaller option is something that you'll wanna consider. It is important to note some of our different options for accessories and access. The Lingrafica devices are direct access devices. So we don't offer any type of visual access mode such as eye gaze, but we do have some various accessories that a lot of our users um, benefit from. So these are our adaptive styli options. The ball grip option I usually think about if you have a client who has difficulty gripping something smaller, but can hold on to something larger, that T grip there, I've used a lot for clients with spasticity. Our weighted stylus is often helpful for a client who might have a trimmer or just decreased precision with that direct selection. And then you'll see here a couple of flexible stylus options on the bottom. That first flexible stylus is long and it can bend and adapt to a lot of different gripping needs. I've used it with hand splints and things like that a lot. And then that flexible stylus with strap does have a strap that you can slide your fingers through. So it's a great option if you have a client that isn't able to grip or hold on to a stylus. And then lastly, that extended stylus, I often recommend if you have someone that just needs to conserve energy or reduce having to reach towards the device. That is very interesting. I, I haven't seen any of the uh, vendors that offered these along with the devices. Um, and we have several of these in the OTAP library for trial as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Like what you said there. Oh, I, I haven't seen these options out there much. So I'm glad that you have some in your library. Um not pictured here, we do have a joystick option that connects to a smoothie button that can tab navigate and crosshair scan. I've also seen um, device users that use that tab navigation with other Bluetooth connection options like a keyboard or a game controller. Like I have seen individuals tab navigate with a gaming controller on our device as well. So tab navigation is an option to keep in mind. We also work with Rehadapt to offer mounting options. The wheelchair mount that you see pictured here is going to be custom made to the user's wheelchair setup. So if they were to go that route with Rehadapt, they'll ask for pictures and they'll, they'll custom create that mount to match their chair. And then Rehadapt also partners with us to offer a table and a floor mount option as well. That's excellent because I do often get asked for mounts. Yeah, really easy process. We just kind of do the same process as you're recommending the device for the mount at the same time. So we support um, the SLP through that whole process and then um, Rehadapt is also a great resource if they need help getting it connected to the wheelchair. They're always um, very supportive about connecting with the family to provide any kind of support with those mounts that are needed. That's wonderful. I love the partnership. So we just wanted to kind of touch to about our philosophy here at Lingrafica and our focus about using AAC and, and what we really um, work towards with our device users. Um, the power of AAC, we want our device users to have increased independence for their everyday activities. We want them to be able to participate in day-to-day -day life activities, whatever that might look like, school, home, um, extracurricular activities, peer relationships. We want to have AAC in place to promote fewer communication breakdowns and better connection with family and friends. 
And then we also really think about our device as a way to improve and practice verbal speech goals. So always keeping in mind that putting an AAC system in place is not moving away from verbal speech goals or verbal outcomes, um, but really a tool to help promote and maximize those goals. So we have a lot of things in our device that we um, like to point out as tools that can be used therapeutically and help to maximize practice for verbal and natural speech. And we'll look at some of those when we dive into the device. So let's lay a little bit of a foundation about kind of how the Lingraphica device is structured and what we feel are the benefits of having that type of flexible AAC system. Um, so we understand that children process language in different ways and Lingraphica's hub software is a flexible AAC system that allows for a lot of personalization specific to the device user. One thing to keep in mind is our hub software is not a grid or core vocabulary based system that focuses on message building from the word level. Rather, it is a system that provides single touch access to functional customizations. So keep in mind that you can add, you can manually add core or fringe vocabulary but it's not going to pop to a message window as you'll see when we head into the device in a bit. A lot of our users really like the structure of the Lingraphica device for those um, single touch phrase-based communications. So you'll see some phrase-based messaging customized into the device as well. And that's what a lot of our users um, find motivating and, and really benefit from. Our system also has access to a large card library that's organized by topic and related vocabulary. And so keeping in mind that having that flexible AAC system um, really allows customization for a lot of social, social messaging that can be used for those natural communication interactions, asking and answering questions, sharing a comment, having that really natural back and forth communication exchange. And it also allows the user to have context or activity-centered customizations. So maybe a page about their favorite game or their favorite book or a particular activity that they're really motivated by. Again, when we're thinking about AAC, I think a lot of us kind of have that mindset when we're first starting out about requesting, rejecting an object or an action. And you'll see that listed here but we also just wanted to point out how to promote participation um, with a, a wide variety of communication across daily activities. So we want our device users to be using their device to gain attention, to make comments, to tell or follow along with a story, to tell a joke, um, you know, really to be able to communicate about and participate in the activities that are most important to them. Um, and also, again, to not just necessarily communicate about positive things or choices, but also to be able to reject or state, I don't like this. I, I don't like what's going on here. This isn't my favorite food or my favorite activity. Um, if you think about the things we communicate about, it's not always all positive. Sometimes I like to complain and we want our device users to be able to do that, too. So just thinking about um, some of the customization and types of communication that we want our device users to have access to. They 100% should be able to say anything that they want to be able to say. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've got some examples here just to kind of get you thinking and looking at our hub software about some examples of customizations that could be added to our language software. So here's a great example of promoting functional communication through the, that phrased based messaging that I was sharing with you. So in a page like this, the user is going to have that one touch access to be able to communicate that whole phrase or sentence. Let's play. Can I have tickles? I want to sit on my pillow. You'll notice the really realistic, concrete photographs and imagery which I really love about the Lingraphica device. And there is a lot of flexibility for what kind of images you can add. And we'll look at those options 
when we talk about editing here in a bit. We also think about using the Lingraphica device to really promote independence. This was an example customization that I had added, helped an SLP add to a device for a young adult user who was getting set up in a vocational setting. Um, they were working at a restaurant, helping with brunch. And so we created this customization, not just to support communication, but really also as a visual schedule, a visual sequence of their work activities that really helped to promote independence for them um, of working through those work tasks and requiring, you know, not a lot of queuing, a lot less queuing over time as they were transitioning to that vocational setting. And then also here thinking about important customizations to be thinking about for a Lingraphica device. I'm really big on every device having self-advocacy, whether that's advocacy for communication needs, for sensory and movement needs, whatever the case may be. This is an example of, of one of those pages that's kind of geared more towards um, sensory and um, you know auditory types of needs. But I also like to add things like um, repeat that please, or say that more slowly, ask me yes, no questions, advocacy that might be geared towards communication. Again, you'll see here the flexibility of the Lingraphica language system. On this page, we programmed a bit more in chunks rather than whole phrases um, because this device user was kind of mix and matching that I need to different requests or, or um, comments about what they needed during their school day to move, to have more time to take a break. Uh, as I was telling you, um, at, well, before everyone came in, the self-advocacy conversation is such a huge thing here in Oregon right now, um, even in legislation. So this is so on point. And Kelly Bonner has a comment in here. Uh, you may want to consider this type of activity-based vocabulary context, specific vocabulary for Gestalt language processors. Some of the students that we have looked at the system are phrase-based communicators, not necessarily those who need every word to put together into full messages. We've looked at it as a backup system for some students who are partially intelligible and need a quick set of messages to clarify their voice. So Absolutely. that's awesome, yeah. Yeah, we do have a lot of um, Gestalt language processors that like the setup of this device. Again, you see here, there may be like a stage two processor who is using more of those chunks to kind of mix and match their communication. You could set it up to be the entire phrase like we saw on that first customization example where they can access that whole phrase-based messaging. But I do think it's important to keep in mind, as I mentioned, that every person processes language differently, right? We know that there are different kinds of language processing. And so keeping in mind that different tools are going to work for different individuals. And it's important to have different tools in your toolbox so that they can really let you know what works for their type of language processing, what motivates them. Um, I have certainly encountered device users who are not motivated by nor have the language structure for word by word um, phrase building. So just another tool to keep in mind. All right, we are gonna shift gears a little bit and kind of take this into a practical application of a case study with Chloe. So Chloe started her device trial with Lingraphica when she was two and she has since had a birthday, but we'll kind of get some more information about Chloe here. So Chloe's background information, she was diagnosed with TRMU deficiency, which is a mitochondrial disorder, respiratory failure and tracheostomy, as well as a G-tube were all part of her medical background. When she initiated her trial, with one of our SLPs here at Lingraphica, she had a baseline communication of around 10 words that she was using via sign. 
And she also had some unique signs that were only understood by some care partners or communication par partners that were most familiar with her. Chloe lives at home with her mom, her 11-year-old sister, her cat, and her chinchilla. So a little bit of background about Chloe. Some of the strengths that we identified during the device trial with Chloe was that she had very supportive and involved parents. Um, she was very motivated and in intelligent. And she was also working with an SLP who had no prior AAC experience, but researched and requested our support for device training. So a little bit later on, I'm going to kind of break down the two types of trial paths that you can do at Lingraphica. And Chloe was doing our at-home trial route where she was receiving support and device training from uh, one of our SLPs here at Lingraphica for the trial. And then we coordinated for an external SLP to do that assessment and final recommendation process. So some barriers that we ran into during her device trial, she was working with multiple caregivers. And as I mentioned, she kind of had inconsistent communication modes depending on the communication partner. So it made it difficult um, to get that consistency across communication situations. Also, as you saw, there were some medical conditions going on here that had a lot of priorities, oftentimes over targeting communication. Some of her personal and family goals. So her family was really focused on a stronger, better way to increase communication with Chloe. Um, again, they felt that there were a lot of things that she wanted to say on a daily basis, but that she was unable to communicate with them. And they also commented that we make up signs and sometimes we don't know what they mean. For example, Chloe in one situation put her hands on her hips and grandma and mom did not know what that meant, but her nurse recognized, oh, Chloe wants to sing, I'm a little teapot. So again, it really depended on the communication partner to be able to respond to some of those communications that she was doing with her signs. So during her device trial, Chloe worked on identifying color names using our draw tool to color a picture. She formulated requests using the talk app or our talk tool in her let's play folder. She participated in literacy-based activities by selecting cards to label pictures um, with some of her favorite stories. She began asking for help. She would play a game with her communication partners by identifying what made a sound, which we're gonna see in a video here in a moment. And again, she was doing um, that remote clinical support during her SLP sessions with an SLP at Lingraphica as well to support that learning and, and trial of the device. So let's take a look at Chloe with her device. And you'll see she's very proficient with navigating. And this is talking about that game that we mentioned where she's gonna be sharing what she hears and who she sees. Yes, good job. And who do you see? Who do you see? I see. Who do you see? Oh. Yeah. Good job. So again, Chloe was able to communicate that she heard a train. Her communication partner asked her who she saw. You saw she navigated to her page of people. She looked at the options and she was like, no, this isn't what I'm looking for. So she went back and then she was able to find her card that said mama. And you saw she was very excited when she located it and was able to communicate that. Um, so again, just that really functional one touch access to her communications and she was quite proficient at navigation during her trial. 
So let's take a look at some of Chloe's personal device customizations. Again, we're going to dive into a demo of the device in a bit, but hopefully this will kind of give you an idea of how it could be customized to a specific device user. So this is the home screen on our device. And here you can see the tools that Chloe had, you know, had selected to have on her device and used the most. So this home screen is customizable, which I'll show you. And these were the tools that she really felt were most relevant for her communication. So she kept talk, which is where those pre-stored messages that she was accessing were located. Type, which is a text to speech keyboard. Draw, that virtual whiteboard where it was talking about her coloring and, and doing some creative work. And then media, which is organization and access to pictures, video recordings, audio recordings, um, and things of that nature. So the other tools in the Lingrafica device have again been hidden here, just to reflect what tools were most relevant to Chloe's communication needs. So Chloe's start page, once you open talk, contained folders for each of her different caregivers and therapists, along with a standalone card to request to use the potty and to request assistance. She also has pages um, of folders for requesting specific activities, like reading her favorite book, doing a puzzle, and playing a penguin race game, which was a big favorite of hers. And then again, as you move to page two of those options, you'll see Chloe is really into art. So she had some communication in her art folder. She has a folder here for greeting so she could greet others by name. <clears throat> there are those folders that you saw her using for her senses. So talk about what she hears, sees, smells, and feels. And then her requests folder there to make those requests. And also her family loved holidays. So that was a big one for them. They did a lot of customization on the device about holidays, which you see here. Page three had several academically focused vocabulary options. So again, you'll see that um, self-advocacy here for her relax or wants and needs. And then some academic topics like numbers, colors, things that she was working on in school. This is just a peek inside of Chloe's My Songs folder that we saw here. So this one, if you peek inside, you'll see some of her favorite songs. You can see that on the last three cards, there's that tiny microphone symbol beside the name of the song. And what that indicates is that those cards are an audio recording of someone singing this song. So when Chloe would tap those cards, she is not only gonna um, be sharing her desire to maybe sing that song, but also she's gonna hear her mom, her care partner, whoever recorded that particular card singing it at the same time. All right, just another sneak peek here. This is inside one of those communication partner folders that we saw for Miss Meg. And just an idea about some of the things that Chloe was communicating about as far as activity choices, requesting help, requesting to take a break. And again, you'll note the images here are all really functional concrete images of Chloe's home environment her puzzle, her, her toys and activities. And then here's that penguin race game folder that I mentioned. So this was a favorite game of Chloe's as we were trialing the device. And this folder really allowed her to fully participate by commenting, making a choice, declining, or asking for help during that game. So after Chloe's trial with Lingrafica, um, she did continue, continue to receive speech therapy three times a week at an outpatient clinic. Um, 
well, three times a week, sorry, once at an outpatient clinic, once at an at-home visit with her outpatient SLP. And then she did one of those visits via telehealth. And after Chloe got set up with her permanent device, she continued to really progress with requesting activities throughout her therapy sessions, making choices at home. And it was a really big change for her in identifying and calling family and and friends by their names. That was a big um, goal for her family and one that she really progressed with quite a bit. Any questions about Chloe's customizations, her device setup before we switch gears? Would anybody like to unmute and ask any questions? Uh, they are wrapped attention. <laughs> yep, like that's okay. That must mean we covered it all and that it was really clear. So, okay, we have made it to the portion where we're going to switch gears and do a demo of the device. So, I'm going to stop my presentation screen share and switch over to my device. All right. Now the technology worked earlier. <laughs> oh, I know, just had been sitting and it just decided to go to sleep on me, but I got it back. So this is my device that I am screen sharing with you. So I know sometimes people ask me, what are you working off of? I'm working off of the Touch Talk Plus today. And so I'm just projecting my device screen up to my computer. So you are actually seeing me work in one of our devices. And again, this is the home page layout in our new hub software. So I mentioned that there are various tools that the user can access here. You saw the options that Chloe had, but I do just want to kind of lay a foundation for what is available here so that if you're working with a Lingraphica device, you'll know maybe what tools are gonna to be most relevant for your particular client or device user. So most of our device users are going to spend their time and talk, and that's where we're going to spend most of our time today too. But I wanna show you these other tools briefly. Type, again, is that text-to-speech keyboard option where the user is going to be able to type at the word level. They will get predictive text at the word level that they can select from there. And then whatever they have typed into the message window. Happy Wednesday. Will speak when they tap that speak button. You'll notice that there's a highlight feature there. Happy Wednesday. That highlights the text as it states that message. And then there are various options that you can select for the keyboard. Right now, I have a high contrast keyboard turned on on my device. There are light key and dark key options. You can change the size of the um, letters on the device as well as switch over to an ABC setup, perhaps away from a QWERTY keyboard. So some different features to keep in mind about type. I'm gonna tap back to home. And we will open that draw tool, which is going to open to that virtual whiteboard. This is where I mentioned about Chloe that she really loved to come and work on her colors and draw. So I certainly use it for that purpose for a lot of clients. You'll see the color palette here on the left. We have a skin tone selector, four different pen width options. And then there's also the option here to add an image. It might seem simple at first, but I feel like this op opens itself up to all kinds of therapeutic support and visual supports that you could quickly bring into the device. I have gone to this add image option and created a quick visual schedule, either from images that we've taken in the user's device or just by doing a quick web search. I've done word searches here, brought in coloring pages to this and allowed them to actually color on a coloring page. So lots of different ways that you can add an image to this virtual whiteboard and allow that to support some of your therapeutic 
activities or again, visual support for maybe what's going to be going on that day. Anything that you create here on the draw board can be saved. So once you've added your image and done work on the draw, bo draw board, you'll see that save option and you can send it to a communication card or you can save it to media to access again later. So if you're creating a visual schedule that you want to access a certain day of the week every week, you can have lots of visual schedules in there and just open or grab the one that you need for that day. Create a card. I've absolutely used that um, if I have a client who draws an image that they really love. Maybe the client draws a picture of their dog and they want to use their drawing rather than a photograph for that communication card. So that is draw. We'll pop back to home and I'm going to open media. I usually just like to tap on view media. And then on the left, you'll see that organization for everything that media has to offer. Here are those drawings. Again, you can see various um, coloring pages <clears throat> or doodles that my own kids have been in here creating that we've saved to those drawings. Media is also where you're going to find photos that you've taken or downloaded to the device. You can organize your photos in albums. So maybe you want to create albums for family or friends or to work on particular naming categories, um, school activities, whatever that might be. And then media is also where you can create video and audio files. Video and audio files can be up to five minutes in length. So there's a lot of flexibility to get creative there. Here's an example of a hand washing sequence that I was working on with an SLP. Um, so it could be, again, an ADL type sequence. It could be a visual social story that maybe you're wanting to create for your client in here, as well as those audio files. Um, as the comment earlier mentioned, sometimes we have users who are using our device and are working on intelligibility or that's their primary concern. So maybe they wanna go in here and practice some of their speech goals and record themselves or maybe certain times of the day, their speech is a little bit more clear with some practice, they wanna record their own voice onto some of their communication cards. So lots of flexibility for using that video and audio recording option. Pop back to home and the, the remaining two tools showing here are those free therapy tools that we talked about at the beginning. Therapy, again, is going to launch out to talk path therapy. I usually just tap on all exercises and then you can kind of get a feel here for some of the different practice opportunities outlined by category. Keep in mind that we do use our device across the lifespan. So some of these activities may be geared towards older users, but I, I do find some relevant therapy exercises in here for my pediatric users as well. So you can absolutely create that customized plan so that they're just going to see the activities that you've selected as relevant to them. And it will kind of weed out the ones that are not relevant. So that's that free therapy library. And then news, that's that supported reading app that we discussed. Again, you'll see articles laid out across different areas of news when you select an article. Scientists in Colombia say they have developed a new food substance that protects bees from dangerous chemicals used in farming. You can pause, you can move the highlight throughout the article and it will provide those comprehension or recall questions at the end. So I have used this tool with some of my older pediatric or young adult clients. Keep in mind as we discussed that this home page setup is customizable. So the blue settings menu button on the Lingraphica device is always going to place you into the settings for the tool that you're in. We're on the home page. When we tap that blue settings button, it's going to place us right there in those home settings. You'll notice that there are a lot of options 
for your display. You can certainly change the size, the alignment, the grid layout of that homepage setup based on the user's preference or visual needs. But also this blue button here that says arrange apps is going to allow you to really pick and choose what tools are most relevant. So you'll already see that some of our tools that are more focused towards our adult clients are hidden in the pediatric template. If you wanted your device user to have access to Chrome, you could absolutely just tap the plus sign and bring it back into view. When you tap the minus sign, it's gonna hide from view. So maybe you have a client that's not using type, and maybe they're not using news. Maybe they wanna set up like that, or maybe they just want talk and draw. So you can really go in and customize using those minus and plus signs to bring those tools in and out of view. You don't have to save or anything. When you're ready, you can just arrow back and then your homepage is going to reflect whatever tools you've selected. All right, any questions about those other tools before we dive into talk? I don't see anything in the chat, but I welcome anyone to jump in and if you have any questions. I apologize for my dogs in the background. All right, well, let's dive into talk. So talk again is really where most of our users are going to spend the majority of their time and what I think of as the communication system piece of our device where the user is going to provide or be able to access those um, pre-stored messages. The organization that you see here is that our pages are laid out by folders. So my wants, eat, colors, those are folders. And then you also see communication cards. So Hi. when yeah. you tap on them, they're gonna state that message. So let's explore a little bit. Here's that My Wants page that we saw in a screenshot earlier. Let's play trains. Now we can see it in action. Go swing, go. I want to sit on my pillow. So again, that really functional, quick, one-touch access to phrase-based messaging that some language processors really like. The images here, again, can reflect their exact toy, the user's um, you know, exact swing. There's a lot of flexibility for setting up those images. Since we've navigated into this folder, I'll show you a little bit about navigation. We can tap the back button to go one page back. Or anytime we want to return to that start page, we can tap the start button here with the star. And then perhaps the user wants to go into eat. Again, here you'll see a different example of the flexibility for the language structure. So if you had a client that wanted to sequence, they could certainly sequence. I want chicken nuggets. Keep in mind, it's not going to pop to a message window. If they wanted one touch access to a phrase that said, let's eat chicken nuggets, or I want chicken nuggets, you could program this chicken nuggets card to say that entire phrase based messaging. So a lot of flexibility, again, in how you set that up. I want to show you a little bit about editing. So to make changes within the device, you're going to tap on editor you'll notice that everything existing gets a little pencil in the upper right corner. So if I wanted to change the image for popcorn to you know, maybe a specific container that my client ate their popcorn out of, I could tap on that pencil and it's gonna open up that card to allow me to start editing the name, the spoken message, the image, anything that I wanna change about it. As we arrow back to that edit menu, you'll see the option here to add new content. So we'll tap add. First option when we're adding new information is do we want it to be a folder that's going to open to that additional content or a card? And then cards have four modes. Communication is what we were just looking at where we tapped those 
um, play or activity cards, and it communicated that pre-stored message. Here is the option for recording. So the user can record their own voice in real time, or again, maybe parent wants to record a song to go with a song card, or you could tap choose audio and bring in those pre-recorded options that you've already added to media. Same thing for video, you could record a video in real time, or you could choose a video that you've added for media. And then the fourth mode option for a card is a web card. So you can create a card to launch out to a web page. Maybe your client, like Chloe, loves Little Teapot. She had a video in her device where she could tap and it would go to that song. So lots of different options here. Um, I've even used this to access things like Google Classroom or maybe academic-based web pages that a student might be using um, for their academic needs. Keep in mind that there are also usage controls in the device where you can turn this option off. So if you have a friend that you don't want launching out to web pages, you can just remove that as an option as well. But maybe we just want to add a new favorite food that um, our client or student has come in with that week. Maybe they are loving string cheese right now. The card name is what it's always gonna default to. So depending on how you want your text to look, you could do something like this. And you could have your text and spoken message be a little different. Let's eat string cheese. Or you could just keep it all the same and just use this box. So you don't have to use the spoken message, only there if you feel like you need to kind of piece out the text and the spoken message. And then four options for card image. Select from existing is going to be the Lingraphica library of images. So if we looked for cheese in here, we would get lots of options already in the Lingraphica library, but maybe not necessarily specific to string cheese. So we could choose for media, maybe mom or dad or another care partner have already taken a lot of images of their favorite snacks. You could access that there in that media location. You could take a photo in real time while your client is having their string cheese snack, or you can do a web image search. These are pulling from a modified Google search. So you're going to get, again, those really nice concrete salient images. I do always keep my safe search on. I've never had an issue with anything that pulls up in here, but knowing that you're in a school in a pediatric setting, just keep in mind that you can keep that on as an option. Sometimes I will even search the specific brand name of maybe my friend's favorite kind of string cheese. So you can get pretty specific in here. Once you've selected the image, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can also move it around like this if you wanted to crop out a certain section. Anything in the green is going to remain visible. And then you can save and save. Let's eat string cheese. If I wanted to move that card to a different location, I could just simply long press or hold down and you're going to see that it's gonna to start to wiggle and I can drag and drop it. Maybe if I do have a phrase-based communicator and I wanna delete this sequence, I can tap those two cards and delete them. Very easy to just hide things quickly. That delete button feels a little scary, feels a little permanent, but anything that you delete or hide is gonna go here to your trash and it can always be restored. So you can absolutely hide things um, or make some quick adjustments in that way. Also, we have our search button, which I use to make quick edits as well. Maybe I have a client or a student come in and I wanna add strawberries to their food page. I could search here. It's gonna show me everything that's in the device about that topic. I can tap on location to go to the fruit page and find it, but most likely they want it right there on their eat page. So I'm just gonna tap add. 
So you can use search as a way to familiarize yourself with what's already in the device and make those quick edits without having to start from scratch. Again, to move through those pages in the device, you can use these buttons like I'm using here, or you can also swipe left to right on the device. So a couple of different options for navigation of moving through the pagination on the device. Remember that blue settings menu button will always place you in the settings for the tool that you're in. So because we're in talk right now, settings button is going to place us into talk settings. And this is where you're going to get those options for the way that talk looks and behaves. So there are, again, alignment options. Maybe you have a client with some visual considerations. You can move that button bar around. But then there are also options for your grid or your layout. So maybe you want to go large cards and folders. You can also play around with the rows and columns here to really adjust your layout. A layout on the Linkgraphica device can be anywhere from two to 24 cards and folders, depending on the size and then the row column selections that you make here. Thank you for answering my question before I asked it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, keep in mind that it's very flexible, again, depending on um, kind of how you want that to look. So if we pop back out there and talk, you'll see I'm now on that large size with the row column layout three to two. So lots of different options for the layout. And there are some selections here too you can make about font size, how many lines of text you have showing on your card. Under card behavior, you have options for folder and card sound features, as well as projection. I'll turn on projection and then this highlight of spoken word feature and show you what that looks like. So if I pop into Let's eat string cheese. Our new card that we made there. Or we could go back to our My Once folder that we looked at earlier. Go swing, go. You'll see that projection is going to have that selected card popping forward and highlighting the spoken text. So again, just a feature that may be helpful for, for some of your clients that you can turn on or off here under card behavior. The highlight has three different color options and it can go word by word or progressively highlight the whole phrase, just like you took a highlighter to it. And then those usage controls that I mentioned, you can turn off that website launch feature as well as turn off edit mode. So maybe you have a friend that you don't necessarily want editing, you can make that edit button go away for the time being. Also here in our blue settings menu button, General settings is always going to be hanging out to the left. And that's where you're going to find more of those global device settings. So not necessarily specific to a tool, but just settings across the device. So you can connect to your Wi-Fi here. Language and voices is a big one that I use a lot. <clears throat> there are 39 voices to choose from in the device. Hello, I'm one of your Linggraphica voices. You can hear the one we've been using. Hello, I'm one of your Linggraphica voices. There are some young adult options in here. Hello, I'm one of your Linggraphica voices. So just keep in mind a lot of options to choose from. Hello, I'm one of your Linggraphica voices. And then the device can go over to Spanish. So you can change the language entirely over to Spanish. Or we do have this dual language mode option. So dual language mode is a great option for a client that is perhaps bilingual and wants to have access to both English and Spanish customization in the device. You'll see within talk, dual language mode is going to give us this translate button. So when we tap on translate, it will move everything in the device over to Spanish and it will stay in Spanish until we tap, tap translate again and move it back over to English. So if you have a communication, 
um, communication partner who's maybe at school and you need English access and then at home, your device user is using Spanish, they can quickly move back and forth between both languages. And then lastly, here in general settings, again, those keyboard options we discussed are in here, but I do want to let you know that our hub software is account based. And so what that means is that if you have a device user who's doing a trial with Lingraphica or they have a permanent device with Lingraphica in our hub software, that is going to be logged into their account. So any customizations or changes that you make to the device are going to sync and save to your client's account in real time when the device is connected to Wi-Fi. So you don't have to do any type of manual backup um, or anything like that. Keep in mind that it's going to be able to save their customizations and settings to their account. So if something happened to the hardware of the device, all of that would be backed up. So Sarah, um, I want to jump for a second back to your translation and the language. That's a big conversation for us. Um, is the translation via Google Translate or is it an embedded software? Like how is it being translated or is that something that's being programmed in manually? So it's going to do all of the heavy lifting for you. You'll notice when I turned that on, it asks me if I want to translate all of the cards that I've added since um, having that option on. I've only added one since I last translated, but I can just say translate and it's going to do all of that for me. So if we were back in, let me turn our edit mode back on. If we were back in talk editing, you'll notice when we add, it's now going to have an English and a Spanish option. So you can do all of your customization in English and it'll just translate it to Spanish for you. So platform is that it uses to translate? I do. Yeah, I do think it's pulling from a version of like Google Translate, but just know that the SLP or the care partner doesn't have to be able to support the other language. The device is going to do all that work for you and it's not going to leave the talk system like to go out to a separate type of tool. So it's going to look just like that. You won't even know that it's doing anything. It's just going to translate that for you right there. You can also batch translate. So you can do everything in English. And if I added a hundred cards, I could then just tap that translate message that it gave me and it will do all 100 to Spanish at a time. And it it's fast. It doesn't take much time at all. So the audience is wondering about the accuracy of the translation. Really. Yeah, that's a great question because as we know, there are many dialects of Spanish. Um, we do have a whole bilingual staff of SLPs and product support here at Lingraphica. Obviously, this is not going to account for every dialect or every possible difference in Spanish, just like we would see in English, though. I know I'm from the Midwest. If I were programming a card that was about what I call pop, other people would call that soda. Okay, I now live somewhere else. And so I have to monitor myself and call it soda because people will look at me funny if I say pop. So just like there are dialectal differences in English that we would have to account for, there are going to be times where it may give you a translation that the family says, oh, that's not how we say that. Let's go in and edit it. So you can absolutely go in and make that manual change to reflect the dialect. Um, so be aware that that may happen from time to time. Because I know if, when I've worked with some of our bilingual SLPs here, they've mentioned that like, oh, you know, I'm from Colombia. And that's not how we would necessarily say that in comparison to maybe someone who was from Mexico or a different dialect of Spanish. So that's a great question and something to be aware of. And does Lingraphica have any um, plans to bring this out in other languages? Yeah, that's definitely a feature request that we get. And so we are gathering that information and asking, you know, our SLPs when we meet with them, what languages are you seeing the most? What language do you think would be, you know, best to kind of add to the device next? So I do think that in the future that that's something that, you know, maybe keep an eye towards. I don't have a specific time frame on, on when that might happen. Um, in the meantime, there are a couple of different things that you can do to work around with some other languages. That keyboard option that you see when you're editing, 
there are different languages that we can add as a keyboard and so that you can type the text in another language. Keep in mind that languages that orient from right to left don't work for that keyboard edition. So if you're talking about a language that orients from right to left, that's not gonna be a, a very good workaround. Um, but maybe French, for example, is, is a keyboard that we could add and you could type the text. The other thing that you would then want to do is use your voice recording option. So a family member or a communication partner that spoke that language could then record messaging in that particular language. So you could set it up with some additional work to reflect another language, depending on the language that it is. When we see a trial come in here at Lingrafica and the SLP has selected that there is another language, another primary language, we will try to connect with you before the trial process starts to see what that language is and how we could potentially support with adding one of those keyboards or what that might look like for that particular language. So we'll try to have that discussion to see how we can support with that before we get started on the trial. And so will it translate if you're not connected to the internet? So that's a good question. I think that obviously to have the device using its maximum ability with that dual language mode, you want to be on the Wi-Fi. I would have to ask our product support if it's already translated them, if you, if you would still have to be on Wi-Fi. If you are translating things that you have just customized and added, you would absolutely have to be on Wi-Fi to translate that. Um, but I would have to ask our product support about the ones that have already been translated, if it holds that storage, um, so that if you're not on Wi-Fi, it would still have access to those previously translated options. That's a great question. I can definitely email you some more details about that. I love that. And I'll make sure that to our audience. Yeah, absolutely. Things that are important to keep in mind about Wi-Fi, obviously anything that says web, like this web image search feature. You're gonna have to be on Wi-Fi for that. Things on our homepage, like um, where we had therapy and news, since those are launching to a web page, those will require Wi-Fi. When you're in talk and you're accessing your pre-stored messaging, then you don't necessarily have to be on Wi-Fi, but you'll wanna connect to Wi-Fi to do that syncing to their um, account for their customizations, and also to get updates from Lingrafica. Any updates that we send out are going to come across when the device is connected to Wi-Fi and power. So just some things to be aware of to make sure that you do periodically connect to Wi-Fi for those types of features. All right, so that is the device in a nutshell, what I wanted to share with you about Hub. I have just a couple more slides over here that I will pop back into and just give you a real quick overview of our trial process. I know we're getting close to time, so we'll keep those. So, sorry, what was that? We, we have about seven minutes left, so I think Perfect. doing well. And if anybody uh, would go ahead and type uh, in the chat box, any any languages that you support um, so we can let Lingrafica know what we need. Absolutely. Let us know what you're seeing in your area, what languages are coming up as a need a lot. And then that will really help our product team, as I mentioned, kind of know where to go from here. OK, so let's lay out the trial process here at Lingrafica. Again, I mentioned there are two routes. Most of our trials are going to be the SLP-led device trial route where the client is working with an SLP and that SLP is going to be the one that supports that trial process. So the first step is a benefit check. Our funding team is going to let you know within three business days of submitting that benefit information exactly what that funding for your client's um, device might look like through their insurance. We do work with all kinds of private insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid, and st even state or alternative funding programs. Then we're going to send out that loaner device. You will be connected with one of our clinical consultants. They're all speech pathologists. So they're going to be able to support 
with training, customization, connecting with the care partner for support and training throughout that trial process. We try to set our trials for around three weeks or so, but again, you'll, you'll kind of set that timeline with your clinical consultant based on um, your therapy schedule and client's needs. Trial the device. At the end of that trial process, if the device is not a fit, there's a prepaid label in the box and you can return it to us. It's a free, no obligation trial. If the device is a fit, that's when one of our clinical documentation specialists is going to jump on board to help you as the SLP with that recommendation process. We do use a paperwork portal that has a template evaluation form that's mostly check boxes and drop downs. So we try to keep, keep it really simple, really easy, and not add a lot of extra documentation or, you know, um, responsibility on your end as the SLP regarding that recommendation. And then of course that final step is going to be placement of the permanent device. The at-home trial process is very similar, still initiates with that benefit check. But again, maybe you um, have a client who needs to do this process with more support at home. Maybe they're not working with an SLP or you don't have the ability to support the AAC trial with your current caseload or something like that. Lingraphica can work directly with the client and family during those virtual sessions. So these are going to be virtual training sessions. And then we will support with getting the family and the client connected with an external SLP for that assessment and recommendation process. Everything else is going to kind of look the same as far as the supports and the paperwork portal goes. And then lastly, I want to know, let you know about our communication coaching sessions. So for our permanent device users and their communication partners, we offer free unlimited communication coaching sessions that can really help with additional support for device navigation, assistance with features or settings, accessories, helping to add that personalization and customization, um, or just talking about maybe a particular functional activity that they're wanting to use the device for and kind of brainstorming what that might look like. And these are available in English and in Spanish. So keep that in mind for our permanent device users. And then for our SLPs, we have our Lingraphica certification program. So this is a program that allows SLPs to use Lingraphica technologies and to really work collaborati collaboratively with Lingraphica um, to work through a series of ASHA CEU courses. It's really a self-paced um, progression through those courses, but it does allow the SLP to have a loaner device at their facility for screening, to demo to families and students or clients. Um, as long as they are doing some type of engagement with Lingraphica once, every three months, either through a CEU course or a trial or connecting for a device demo, then they are eligible to have that loaner on hand. Again, keep in mind the loaner doesn't take the place of starting a trial, but it is nice to have it there for therapeutic purposes to screen and to demo to families. If you have additional questions or wanna talk about maybe a specific client, you can always schedule a device demo with myself or my colleague, Angela, and we'll meet to look at more specific features. And then here's that QR code to get started with a trial.